Today I want to talk about the laws of physics. Now, my goal is to make sure that we understand that the teachings that I'm doing are not really exotic math. They're, there's math, there's algebra, and there's, there's no calculus, but there's, there's algebra, but not, not like when you get into this area that physicists work. They, they live in a world of all math, and for me, it's, it's, I, it's beyond my ability. My ability is mechanical engineering and chemistry. Other than, other than that, I can't, I can't do this type of math. And um, so as you progress through college, you kind of, there's a point where the math just gives out, and then that, that's kind of what business you go into, and I, I just I can't do this. So let's talk about um, the high level, the highest level and the lowest level of physics. Um, this is the theory of relativity. 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 Good enough. And this is Einstein. He he came up with um, he came up with the equation E equals M C squared. And I'll actually try to explain that one. It'll be the only time that I'll even attempt to do anything. And then down in here, this is where I live, and here's where Newton's laws are. And Newton, what I like about him is that he got hit in the head with an apple, and he, at least that's what the story is, whack. So Sir Isaac Newton hit in the head with an apple, came up with gravity. These are all the laws that, I don't know how many hundred years ago he came up with, but we still use them in mechanical engineering. And... Um, it, uh, so this guy, this is as far as I understand, I, I understand in this box, there's also thermodynamics, I understand this, and um, this is, these are laws of physics, uh, I understand chemistry, and the thing that I wanted to tell you is that I, I was about to start teaching about chemistry, and you know, starting with the atom, and right away everybody turn off, or at least the older audience, the baby boomers that I'm talking to, would just turn off the minute I started talking about atoms. But uh, so I wanted to kind of get an idea of where chemistry fits into this whole complicated set of laws, and it, it's in the box of I th things I think that are understandable by humans. The last area where the physicists go crazy is quantum, quantum, quantum mechanics. And this is where you take an atom, which to me, it, in the world of chemistry, the smallest thing is an atom. You know, an atom. It seems like when I say the word atom, you think, well, that's the absolute most complicated thing anyone can say. But no, these guys, they go down and they take these super colliders, these really long tubes or these really big circles, and they bombard atoms and see what they blow apart into. And there's subatomic particles like quarks and nuons, and there's all these hundreds of sub subatomic so you have atomic like an atom and then you blow these things up and they go into these particles and these guys down here are trying to make sense and right now these two groups are trying to work out how the heck these two this big picture stuff works and this subatomic stuff works and the big goal right now is this thing called string theory and you know of course I know nothing about it except for the PBS specials that are on there but so this is like how planets and light move and how gravity works and you know uh, this is how blown apart atoms work. So we stay away from this because this is way too complicated and we stay away from this because it's way too complicated. Now I told you that I was going to talk a little bit about E equals MC squared. Okay, and the only thing that I know about E equals MC squared is that when this is what throws my, it really throws my kids off when I'm teaching them chemistry. Only in this, only in this Einstein world do you ever have a change in mass. So when, when you live in a chemistry world, atoms in general are not happy in the world. They want to pair up with other atoms and that's it. So the atoms pair with other atoms and they give off heat when they do that. That's about it. But in this Einstein world, 
you actually can have like a big uranium and you hit it with a neutron, which we don't know what that is yet, but you hit it with a neutron and the thing blows in half. So that one part goes flying this way and one part goes flying this way. And it has a million times the power of a carbon oxygen reaction. And when you get done, if you were to, I know you, I can't even conceive of this like weighing it, but if you were to weigh this particle and this particle, you add them up, they would be less than this. So let's say this had 10 and this had five and this had four. Now I'm using, I'm using back the Newton's laws where you add things that you probably can't, can't apply that to this crazy stuff. But you would say, well, what happened to that one unit of uh, where that, wh why is it less? Why did, why, what happened to one? Well, that's where that Einstein says that energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. Now this is a constant. Like, you know, who would put the speed of light squared in an equation, but he would. So that mass, that one unit of mass here just turns into energy and that's the thing that causes the thing to explode. So when you make mass disappear, it turns into energy. That, that's exactly it. Mass goes away. When mass changes, like when these 10 go to 9, there's one extra and vroom. So that's the, that's the explosion. That's what causes the nuclear bomb is that you're getting a change in the actual, I guess the size of the universe is actually changing. And you're going from an actual object into energy. Now, this gets my kids a little um, confused because they think that you can take like hydrogen, which is the way the sun does it. You take hydrogens and you, you cause them to come together and they make helium. And once again, you get, uh, you lose some mass. This is, this is called fusion. And the previous uranium stuff I talked about was fission. So one, one puts things together and one breaks things apart. So this is what we're using in nuclear reactors and nuclear bombs. And this is what the sun is doing. And we're also trying to figure out how to do this uh, very complicated thing where we take hydrogens and we put them together and make helium. Now, this is the only time that any of this, any time an atom ever changes its behavior is in this crazy law of physics, this, this Einstein stuff. In chemistry, we never, never, ever have two a helium, a hydrogen turning into a helium. They don't, they don't do that. But just the fact that it's out there, I have to talk about this, these laws of physics and this change in mass and all this Einstein stuff. And then as soon as we get done learning this stuff, I'm going to think, let's never think about it again. Let's assume that Einstein never lived and we never, hydrogens, two hydrogens never turn into a helium and we can't split uraniums in half and get two new atoms. So laws of physics E equals MC squared. You're actually changing how much the universe weighs and you're turning it into energy. And let's never talk about this again because I have no qualifications in this area. Okay, that's it.